Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, after a bit of a hiatus, uh, Friday Live has returned. Uh, this is our 23rd episode, and uh, we uh, hope to get in at least one more before the end of the year. And it's, uh, it's fantastic to be back. We're here uh, with a very special guest today, Mr. Julien Tonnerre, who you, is Jack. the uh, global CEO of uh, Zenith, which has been having quite an interesting year. And um, so one of the things we like to do, of course, uh, you know, sort of a tradition on Friday Live before sure. we uh, uh, sort of get into the meat of the program, so to speak, is we talk a little bit about the watches that yeah, we're wearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Julien, I think uh, you have, uh, you brought something quite interesting. I did, I did, I did. I actually got two watches. I got the, uh, the DeFi, the DeFi collection, the new pieces that we're launching this year. Mm -hmm. First one is the DeFi 21, uh, this new chronograph measuring the 100 of a second. So very happy about that. It's really uh, the evolution of the original Le Primero. And of course, the one we talked a lot these days in the press is this new DeFi lab, uh, incorporating the new oscillating uh, system that was uh, created and uh, improving a lot the precision of the watch, mm -hmm. basically. Vibrating Great. at 15 hertz and uh, giving probably the most precise mechanical watch ever made. All right. Yeah. So we're, gonna, we're probably going to, I think we're going to talk about this one in quite a bit more uh, detail. Um, mm -hmm. Before uh, moving on, though, um, I'd like to mention I am wearing uh, the Urban Jurgensen uh, Alfred, uh, which is the latest watch uh, from Urban Jurgensen. 72-hour um, power reserve, uh, steel case, 42 by 11.9 millimeters. Uh, it's uh, quite a beautiful watch, I think. Um, a bit on the large side for a wristwatch at 42 millimeters, but the uh, movement is uh, 32, so it fills up the case quite nicely. Yep. And as we were discussing, uh, you know, before. Uh, uh, before we started broadcasting, uh, a lot of these uh, sort of small, cool brands out there doing interesting things, some of which are quite easy to miss. Um, the in one of the interesting things about this particular watch is that it is an e-commerce only offering, which is quite unusual, still I think in the industry. Oh, yeah. And also unusual for Urban Jurgensen, mm -hmm. which has really you know, relied a lot on sort of physical points of sale to get watches out there and into people's hands. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, quite an interesting, uh, quite interesting piece, I think, and um, an interesting sort of look at what the uh, you know, future of retailing watches uh, might yeah. hold. So, let's uh, let's talk uh, let's talk Zenith. Sure, let's um, talk Zenith. So um, the uh, uh, let's I, I think we can get right into the yeah. uh, the Defy Lab. Um, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. So this was um, uh, this was a piece obviously uh, launched this year, um, and one of the interesting I think the most interesting uh, feature that it has obviously is uh, you have uh, all of the different uh, components yeah. uh, of the regulating organ uh, that you find in a conventional watch. Mm -hmm. They've been reduced to a single component. Correct. So yeah. let's uh, maybe let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, two. Uh, to be totally correct, there are 31 components normally in the regulating part, mm -hmm. and here we only have two. We have a, uh, the most important is the plaque. It's a silicium plaque vibrating at 15 hertz, cut in a very very uh, special way. It's really, uh, mm -hmm. I would say, linked to high level mathematics. To cut it, it's, we're talking yeah. micro microns uh, to get the precision that uh, we are looking for. And there is another small part that's basically helping to hold it, uh, and, and that's the way it works. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. really, uh, really a revolution. You have no more friction, so you don't need oil, uh, and, and the plaque is vibrating uh, like that. So yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's something very, very special. Yeah. Now, one of the major, major differences between uh, this oscillator and a mm -hmm. conventional watch oscillator, which you know, consists of a, a balance yeah. and a lever and an escape wheel, no all the ancillary spring. components, mm -hmm. uh, you know, balance spring. Um, one of the major differences is that this single uh, plate uh, is actually, uh, it's flexible. Yeah. So uh, the ability that it has to kind of, uh, um, you know, bend and flex, this is, this is what allows you to create something that's, uh, that's friction free by and large. For sure. Yeah. And that's what the, of the characteristic of the, of the silicium basically, it's this mm -hmm. flexibility. Very strong, very solid, but very flexible. And playing with the flexibility, you create this vibration, mm -hmm. uh, which lasts and which is extremely regular. So that, that really uh, gives, uh, gives not only the precision of the watch, but basically the constants of the precision. So even if you, if, you, if you lose or gain less than one second for the first 24 hours, most of the watches, when they have less energy, suddenly they lose precision a lot. So after 50, 55 uh, of the full power reserve of the watch, they might lose 18, 20 seconds. With this system, we guarantee that all the way till the end of the power reserve, you're going to lose one, less than one second per 24. That means probably two seconds max. Mm -hmm. so that's really the big improvement compared to the system of Huggins. Yeah. Well, we've seen a lot of, um, uh, I mean, we, um, I've seen a lot of uh, over the last 10 yeah. or 15 years, sort of high tech developments yeah. in uh, escapements, many of them based on silicon. And it has proven uh, over time somewhat difficult for many of the companies mm -hmm. that introduce these things to industrialize them. But the impression that I get from talking to you and from talking to Mr. Bivet, and also from talking to Guy Simon, yeah. uh, who, um, as uh, viewers might know, is uh, head of R&D 
and was the um, uh, was the lead on this project. Yeah. Uh, the impression that I get is that you folks feel that you uh, can, in fact, industrialize this uh, technology. Yeah, we have we have confidence that we're going to do it for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, the objective from the very beginning when we started to discuss was really uh, not to have a concept watch. We really wanted it to be to be industrialized and even to be. Uh, basically to be expanded through the whole watch industry, you know, because we strongly believe that the system is a real revolution. So it, it might take a bit of time, uh, probably next year, but we don't know when. We need to stabilize a few things. We need to be able to go from 10 pieces to a few hundreds. Sure. But, um, but no, no, it's, uh, it's going to happen, surely. One of the things um, that we always see mm -hmm. in um, our ever uh, famous, always popular comments yeah. um, uh, on articles on the site, when we talk about something like this, uh, there's, uh, there's generally speaking quite a lot of anxiety expressed mm -hmm. by uh, more traditionally oriented watch mm -hmm. enthusiasts about what this kind of thing symbolizes, both for a very uh, historically mm -hmm. rooted brand like Zenith and for the industry mm -hmm. in general. And you know, uh, you see people reacting to this sort of thing, enthusiasts reacting to this sort of thing, the way that they uh, would react to quartz um, sure. as something that is a potentially an existential threat to mm -hmm. the kind mm -hmm. of watchmaking mm -hmm. that, uh, that they love. Um, what's what's your view on that? I can understand that. Huh? They always uh, we always have reactions from purists, and yeah. uh, you know, yeah. I always say when the first uh, electric guitars were introduced, uh, many complain about that, and now sure, we sell sure. uh, only electric cigar, electric uh, guitars mostly, and uh, same with cars. So I think it's a, it's an evolution. We did not want to change the Egan system just to change it. Right. We are right. bringing an improvement in terms of precision. Yeah. And it's still totally mechanical. And I should say, ports, I, I so should say, by the way, for those viewers yeah. who, who don't know, Julian actually has yeah. quite a bit of experience on the more traditional side mm -hmm. of the watchmaking sure. industry. Yeah. Um, I do. Yeah. So uh, um, this and this stands in, in I think, remarkable contrast yeah. uh, to uh, you know some of the other things that we see out mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. from Switzerland that are really geared more towards folks who, yeah. you know, want a traditional approach to watchmaking. But my, you know, my, my sort of the feeling that I get from these things mm -hmm. is that they're not, and, and I'd be interested to hear what you think as well. This is not something that's necessarily going to completely replace traditional mechanical watchmaking. I mean, you know, even for Zenith, you wouldn't stop making El Primero no. just because you have this oscillator. No, no, I don't think so. I think it's a, it's an addition. It's showing that we keep on looking for better ways, better mm -hmm. ways to measure the time, more precise, and, uh, and and that's that's basically what we want to do. But we will we will keep, of course, the uh, the regular system. Yeah. I think it's an addition. It, it shows the dynamism of the brand. Mm -hmm. What we want is really to move forward and to come with new ideas, new things. Some will happen, some will not, but uh, I think it's, it's, it's part of the dynamism. If we don't want to be what I would call a museum brand, uh, right. it's very important to move forward, even if you have a long history, even if you come from a traditional side. Yeah, but you folks have, I mean, I mean Zenith has, is really in, in a, uh, uh, there's very few situations where you can say uh, unique mm -hmm. in, in modern watchmaking, but Zenith is really in a unique position in the industry. There were, in 1969, there were yeah. three self-winding chronograph movements mm -hmm. introduced. Uh, Seiko introduced the 6139. Yeah. Um, and Hamilton Buren introduced yep. the, uh, their, their micro-rotor mm -hmm. uh, movement, and um, uh, Zenith introduced the El Primero. And of those three, the El Primero is the only one that has remained continuously in production. Yep. Um, that's a that's a, a wonderful thing. I mean, the fact that you can essentially go into a, mm -hmm. a store and you can buy this yep. movement that has been around since 1969 and has so much history behind it, I think is fantastic. It, it does. But it's also a little bit of a, uh, it, it could be a little bit of a burden in a way. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's true that at some point, sometimes we are more known for this movement than from one particular model. Right. Uh, but I think it's changing, you know, more and more, more collectors I talk to. I mean, today uh, with the El Primero movement, they see the, um, the three counter, the Chronomaster three counter. Mm -hmm. It's getting quite established, this piece, as a collectible. Yeah. Uh, the classic from Elite as well. But today we have the new DeFi coming for sure, and we have the Pilot. We should not forget the Pilot line, which has been so successful for us. It has. So we have basically four yeah. lines, four pillars, very clear. Each of them uh, has its own, um, I would say, environment, mm -hmm. atmosphere. And I think it's great. I mean, we need to offer different style of watches. We, we are a generalist. We should offer different style of watches, and that's what we're going to do, yeah. There's been, a, you know, and of course, speaking of history, one of the big, big trends that I think we've seen, yeah. um, all of us have seen over the last couple of years especially, mm -hmm. is a, a trend towards a reintroducing mm -hmm. uh, beloved uh, vintage models. And, um, in, you know, in many cases, you have the, uh, uh, the outer form of a beloved vintage model, but the engine is different. Yep. Uh, so instead of a value 72 chronograph movement, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, you would have an automatic, something based on yep. uh, um, uh, ANA 7750, yep. for yep. instance. 
So Zenith, again, is in the unique position of having access to its own in-house self-winding chronograph movement that's, you know, in, in most respects, in every, every important respect, unchanged since 1969. Yeah. Um, what do you think the future holds? For, well, first of all, what do you think of this trend as a trend? And yeah. secondly, how, you know, what do you think that it, uh, what opportunities do you think it might create for Zenith? I think it's a great trend, but we sh a brand should not only do it. You should not only go into your history and take a vintage model and do, you know, resell it and reintroduce it. I think it's important to base your development on your history, but also to create something, to, uh, to, right. to bring some added value. Right. So you will see in the coming years, we're definitely going to get inspiration from our past, from our heritage. We have so many great pieces in, a, in our museum in Le Loc. But we also want to continue to be innovative, creative, and to bring something new. And I think the DeFi is a very good example of that, right. because right. we took the case from the one from 1970. Mm -hmm. We started from El Primero, so famous for us, let's do, let's build on it, let's do something else. But we bring, uh, we bring the next level. Yeah. And you know, in uh, 2019, we will celebrate the, uh, the 50th anniversary of the movement. So definitely, it's going to be a big deal for us. And uh, it's going to oh, be a great right. example. It's going to be of, 50 years. Yeah, it's going to be a great example of starting from our past and going not only to today's world, but to the future. We're well, ready uh, to talk about it, but... Uh, yeah, well, or except in uh, <laughs> hints. Exactly. Except in hints. Uh, what, do you think, what do you think works yeah. when uh, doing a vintage-inspired watch, and what do you think wor doesn't work? Again, I think it's... You have to be authentic. You have to really uh, stay in your field. And that's yeah. also something... And it's not an easy exercise, but as a brand, uh, Zenit, we, we, we're coming with these two big innovations. But if you think about it, we are perfectly in line with the DNA. Yeah. We are in our field. Some people ask me, are you going to do a connected watch? I say, no, this is Tag and other brands. It's not us. Yeah. Are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? No, here we come with two pieces that are about precision with the DeFi Lab, clearly improving the precision of the watch, mm -hmm. and chronometry. So we are exactly in the field of Zenit. We are exactly right. where Zenit comes from. Right. So you can, you can respect your past by being in the field, but moving forward and be innovative. And I, I believe this is what people appreciate today when we talk about the, the evolution of the El Primero. Yeah. There were a lot of people who found this, um, well, w as we already discussed, there were yeah. a lot of people who found the um, DeFi Lab kind of conceptually unsettling. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, again, that it might be an existential threat to traditional mm -hmm. watchmaking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, I think you and I both agree that it isn't, uh, no. you know. Um, it's certainly an, a fascinating addition to the vocabulary of modern watchmaking. Yeah. Um, what's it like to, uh, you know, I, I, when I first saw it uh, working um, at the uh, R&D uh, yeah. uh, lab, uh, I found it quite fascinating to watch, but uh, there, are, there are quite a few people who uh, saw the video that we shot of it. They said they found it kind of unsettling uh, mm -hmm. just because of the, you know, the rapid back and forth yeah. movement. Yeah. 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 Um, in terms of uh, sort of living day to day with the aesthetics of the watch, you've, you've been wearing one for a while. Have, yeah. what's, what's it like to live with this thing? You know what? I got used to it. And I had exactly the same feeling like you. First time I saw it, I was like, yeah, having a watch with a vibrating part on, on the whole dial yeah. uh, was it's like a bit surprising. like sitting next to a nervous passenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been in the business for a long time. I yeah. never had that. I was a bit surprised. But actually, I got used to it. And I mm -hmm. really uh, I enjoyed it. And people looking at it, they have a lot of interest. They ask questions. What is it? How does it work? You know? There's I mean, so many watches. Sure, it doesn't look like anything. No, that's why. There. That's yeah. why people are really interested. They ask for it, and I think, uh, I think that's a, that's a very important point. I mean, uh, nobody, nobody, everybody has a feeling about that watch. Yeah. Everybody yeah. Is, has a comment, a feeling, you know. And yeah. uh, and the more we go, the more people like it. So I think, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I, I've had a great time wearing. Yeah. Also, another quite significant difference between this and many of the other exotic silicon yeah. escapements that we've seen is that you, you folks see, seem to intend to make this um, at an accessible price point. Yes, definitely, definitely. This one, I mean, we had 10 pieces, 10 unique pieces. They right. all sold out. They were sold for 29,900 Swiss francs. Mm -hmm. But it was more of an experience. You know, we invite the, the, basically the guests to come to Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was more about the experimental. That's why we called it DeFi Lab. Because mm -hmm. for us, it's literally just out of the laboratory. Right. So they buy a piece of the experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, but the new one, we don't know yet how we're going to price. But yes, we will keep it affordable. But, uh, mm -hmm. pr you know, pricing is, is, is a super important subject. And uh, I'm, I've been a lot into it since I joined, because I strongly believe that the industry went a bit crazy these last 10, 15 years at I some level. I think just about everybody watching would agree with you. And, uh, and uh, I think we should get back to reality. You know, we should make sure that the clients, the buyers, can see the link, the logical link between the object, the watch they buy, and the price. Right. And it's been a bit lost. That's how many brands lost local clientele, in my opinion. And with Zenit, we have a very good value for money. I think the position, the price positioning of the brand is fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, 
uh, you know, I mean, for a lot of uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, historically, Swiss watchmaking, or what we're not not uh, exclusively, but a lot of Swiss, Swiss watchmaking has tended to be uh, luxury watchmaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and with something like this, you're actually trying to take an innovative new form of technology and make it something that people can actually hold in their hands. Yeah. How do you see this technology evolving? I mean, in, you know, in conversations that I was able to have with you, yeah. as well as with uh, you know Mr. Bivert and with Guy Simon. Um, there was a lot of discussion about uh, what the next generation, yeah. next evolution of this technology might look yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, how are we going to do it? First, we will, we will start from this exact technology that's mm -hmm. in the DeFi lab, and we will stabilize it. We will make it available, producible for hundreds of pieces. Mm -hmm. Once this will be done, we are already doing tests on a, what we would call the origami shape. Basically, the, the silicium plate, you, 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 you squeeze it a bit like this mm -hmm. in, a, in a much smaller part that you could basically move in different uh, different position in the in the right. in the watch right. and that will enable us to change the size to change the you won't have this vibrating effect over the whole time you dive. won't see the entire no you won't uh, and you will but you will yeah. you will have exactly the same functionality but in a very different way mm -hmm. we'll be able to have a very thin watch as well right that's right. interesting very very thin elegant with this system Plen plenty of possibilities. To be honest, we haven't explored all of the possibilities. It's just uh, it's the initial fi phase, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love the idea of this technology being uh, uh, available in a smaller, thinner yeah. watch, yeah. where it's even uh, like a little bit of a secret. Uh, you know, on the dial, you yeah. maybe just yeah. see a, the smooth sweeping yeah. seconds hand. You turn it over and you see this uh, technology that yeah. uh, is uh, really, actually, I think, interesting to look at. Yeah. This is very visual, but yeah. we have clients. We know we will have clients that will be very happy and proud to have this technology. But mm -hmm. you know, on a plain dial, yeah. very yeah. discreet. Nobody knows. They only know about it. Yeah. But they can claim they have the most precise mechanic watch. I mean, it's uh, something I personally would find very yeah. interesting. Can I ask you? you this is uh, you, you've been with Zenith now for seven months. Seven months. Yeah. And you, I, I assume you didn't, knew nothing about this project before coming on board. No. Um, how did you feel when you uh, found out about it? Actually, I have to be. I have to tell you that when I started to talk with Mr. Biver, it was a bit like a year ago, more or less. Mm -hmm. And um, we discuss about Zenit, but most important, we discuss about the project. What do we do with Zenit? Where do we right. bring the brand? Right. And that's when we started. In a larger sense. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, quite, quite soon, Mr. Bivert shared with me uh, some of the projects that were in the pipe, including uh, these two that I have here. Um, and for me, it was a total logical step because mm -hmm. I strongly believe that you can have a long history, but again, you need to step forward, move forward. And, uh, and you need to, to, to be innovative. In mm -hmm. today's world, I'm, I'm convinced that people are looking for brands that are, that are moving, that are creating added value. You know? It doesn't right. mean you have to be crazy, but it means you need to move forward. You cannot only repeat the past. Right, right. That's, that, that would be wrong for Zenith. And uh, I want to continue that. Priority is really, um, really to, to take this direction of innovation, yeah. I mean, other than this, um, yeah. you know, as I mentioned to our viewers, uh, uh, you, you came uh, from, a, 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 at one point, a very traditional yeah. background in Swiss watchmaking. Sure. Um, other than the uh, Defy Lab, what else sort of came as a, as a surprise, a pleasant surprise, uh, you know, or, a sh or a shock, if you will, uh, to you when you started, uh, uh, started at Zenith and began to interact with uh, uh, both uh, the more traditional families of products mm -hmm. and uh, the, uh, the sort of R&D side of things, mm -hmm. the more the advanced technology side of things? I was quite surprised by this, uh, the level of the research, mm -hmm. uh, the level of the research, because I expected to have a very traditional brand. Mm -hmm. I knew Mr. Biver wanted to go this direction, but I, I didn't expect the people uh, over there in the Swiss mountain uh, to have already this mentality. Right, right. And when I came on board, I immediately came. I said, okay, we're going to take some new direction for Zenit. We need to change our mindset. We need to work in a different way. We need to have much more of a startup environment. Right. Uh, I change a lot of processes, a, a way people are organized, and uh, and and I think I was quite surprised by the um, yeah the, the the openness of that you know from from the people there. They are actually willing to see the change. They are believing in the project, and uh, step by step we are basically getting everybody on board. We started at the very beginning with Mr. Bivia. We organized some breakfast, you know, mm -hmm. every every two weeks more or less with 30, 40 people. Right, right. And uh, and we share everything that's happening with the brand. I have one next week, for example. I will explain the opening of our boutique on Place Vendôme uh, on Tuesday and the recent events we have this week in uh, in New York to share with all employees where we're we going. You know, because you can be a polisher, you can be a watchmaker in a workshop. You don't always hear that. I think it's super important that. All employees are working the same way. I mean, it's interesting that you, you know to hear you say that you found so many of the folks at Zenith were really on board with yeah. these 
advances, you know, the, the joke, one of the jokes that one hears about Switzerland, and, and you know, you're Swiss, so don't take offense. Yeah. One of the jokes that one hears about Switzerland is uh, when the end of the world comes, I hope I'm in Switzerland because everything there happens 10 years late. <laughs> yeah, I heard that one already. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but it's so true. And one, one great example of that, uh, one of the first time I was in the lab and I saw this new mechanism, there was a watchmaker uh, who worked for Zenit for many, many years, 63 years old. He was barely <laughs> crying. The guy was barely crying. I was excited. He was yeah. crying. I said, I said, are you okay? He said, yeah, yeah, sure. But you know, in my whole career, I would never expect to see such thing. And I'm so happy I have not retired yet and I'm still on board yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to be part of that project. Yeah. Honestly, it was, it was great. The guy has been with us for 40 years. And uh, that shows the, 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 the dimension of this and the commitment of our watchmakers mm -hmm. for this project. Yeah. So we're going to go to uh, questions from our uh, readers, uh, both uh, ones that have come in over the last couple of days and ones that are coming yeah. in now. But before we do, uh, uh, last question before uh, sure. the, the Q&A, uh, the Grand Prix Orlogerie yeah. de Genève. So uh, our readers uh, you know, hear about it every year. Uh, there's always a certain amount of skepticism about it uh, in the U.S. Uh, uh, just because, you know, for, for a brand to be considered for an award by the GPHG, yeah. the brand itself has to submit its watch, which means um, that you get a, a somewhat narrower cross-section of brands than I think a lot of people would like. However, and uh, I was a, you know, on the jury this year, yeah. um, it's, I think it's an interesting process. Uh, the closest thing that we uh, have really to a, a juried competition among different brands right now. Mm -hmm. And um, you guys won an award this year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we did. Um, yeah, we did win exactly the award I actually was expected. Of course, L'Aiguille d'Or is the uh, is the big prize huh, yes. of, the, of yeah. this uh, this ceremony. But innovation is so much part of our strategy. Yeah. All our efforts are going into that this year with these two products. That winning the prize of innovation was something uh, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And and especially, you know, I hadn't been to the Grand Prix for many years because I was always abroad. Mm -hmm. And coming back to that, I saw a great ceremony really reaching a completely different level than when I attended 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I only wish that more brands are participating because the more brands will participate, the more right. we'll have, you know, a feeling of, of, uh, of yeah, of exactitude of, of this competition, you know. You, I you, mean need, it, you it, need to have all the participants. I, I mean, I agree. It would be nice if there were sort of a perspective on the part of all of the Swiss, or as many of the Swiss brands as possible. You know, the, uh, the Academy Awards is, yeah. the, is the analogy everybody brings up. And yeah, it's fantastic to, yeah. uh, you know, win, uh, you know, the Best Actress yeah. Oscar. But uh, everyone also says it's an honor just to be nominated. Yeah, yeah. And it'd be great if there were uh, you know, kind of the same atmosphere at the GPHG. I think so. You mentioned yeah. the U.S., but definitely the credibility of the Grand Prix in the U.S. would, would go up immediately. Yeah. 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 All right. So um, reader comments? Yes. Let's uh, read your yeah, questions. Uh, so uh, let's, let's see what came in um, over the last couple of days. Um, here's one I think a lot of people are wondering. Will we ever see an update to the El Primero movement that makes it more suitable to the size of the modern watch case? Now, I find, I find this question kind of funny because this is one of those damned if you do and damned if you don't things. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you have a modern size watch case, uh, there are going to be people who say, oh, 40.75 millimeters, how could you? You've, mm. you've betrayed the spirit of the brand. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do a 36 millimeter watch, of course, you're too it's hard to sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're too traditional. So well, it's, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about that. Yeah, them. no, I think today, uh, clearly with the DeFi um, 21 and this new El Primero 21, we are moving forward. So it would be also not logical to keep the original movement uh, the way it is. It doesn't mean we will not continue to have the original movement, but right. the El Primero one-tenth of a second striking will, will definitely evolve. We will have new ways of doing it. Uh, we, will, uh, we will optimize it mm -hmm. because it's, it's 40 years old, yeah. uh, soon 50 years old. So we need, we need to make it move. And yeah. yes, there will be evolution. Well, it's, although it's proven surprisingly durable. I mean, you know, 50 years old next yeah, year, and it seems yeah. fine. Yeah, but yeah. There, there are ways we could improve. We could yeah. improve the, the making of the movement for sure. Well, we've yeah. seen the striking tenth yeah. certainly was representing yeah. evolution. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, coming in uh, in real time, uh, Micah Ferguson would like to know what the movement sounds like as opposed to a traditional watch. Sounds. The sound. The sound of the Defy Lab. Uh, you have a bit of noise, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You can hear it. You have a bit of noise when, the, when it's vibrating. Yep. Yeah. But it's okay. I mean, uh, after a little while, you get used to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounds like a little, uh, like a, a small insect. It's not terribly loud. Yeah. No, no, it's not. It's not. It's yeah. not. Honestly, you get really used to it. But it's nice. I mean, you, 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 you hear the vibration, basically. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's it. You should experience that. It's better. Well, here's, a, here's a sort of a general question. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, we usually get one of these uh, pretty much every time we do a live broadcast. But this, there's some, someone wants to know, uh, how can a young guy who's passionate for watches, yeah. uh, make a career in watchmaking or in the watch industry? 
You mean the watchmaker arm? Well, that's, uh, I think uh, yeah. the, the question seems to be yeah. a general one, but I would guess uh, somebody looking for a career on the technical side? Yeah. yeah. Of course. I mean, uh, people, they have passion when they join. And, uh, and definitely for, uh, for that kind of job, uh, we need someone not only that has the skill, but uh, that really wants to, uh, yeah, to share this passion with the other mm -hmm. one. So we have, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The, I mean, whenever anybody asks me that question, the first piece of advice yeah. I give them is learn French. Yeah, that helps a bit. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Um, this is an interestingly phrased question. Is the Defy Lab considered by Julien, by you, yeah. as the El Primero of the 20th century and revenge against quartz? Uh, I'm not sure I want to use the word revenge. Yeah. But uh, what I would say is that we are, we are basically teasing the, 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 the quartz. You know, we are basically challenging the precision of the quartz. And right. that's the first time it ever happened from a mechanical point of view. So that, that, that's great, but quartz is quartz, and uh, it's gonna be, it, nothing is ever going to be as precise as quartz. So right. we like quartz. You know, bar, barring the, uh, the appearance of a, a wrist-sized wrist uh, yeah. atomic clock. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Which, who knows? It could happen. You never know. Yeah. Um, there are several, several folks asking sort of similar questions, so yeah. I hope you guys, uh, you, those of us watching, I hope you don't mind if I collapse a couple of them together. Um, are there plans to make the oscillator available, this is, some folks want to know, to other brands in LVMH? And, related question, uh, is there, are there plans to possibly make the technology available to a brands outside uh, the group? You know, I, I really think we should. I think, uh, first of all, we need to develop it the way we're doing now, stabilize it, make it uh, feasible as a series, and then why not? I mean, we should open it. It's such a big uh, revolution. If we claim it's such a big revolution since Ugen 1675, and we only keep for us, it doesn't make sense. We had long discussion with Mr. Biver about that, and we really agreed that it should serve the whole industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, definitely. So yeah, well, we will open it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, somewhat more specific question. Yeah. A couple of folks want to know a little bit more about the Aero, the Aeronith uh, case. Yeah. Aeronith is, I have, say, I have to say, we made it for only for these 10 pieces to make it even more special. We felt the watch was so special, we have to dress it in a different way. But we're not going to use this, uh, this material anymore. It was just a one shot for these 10 pieces. And really? The, the, yeah, the next oh, evolution will basically, okay. uh, the next um, DeFi, uh, the DeFi lab in series, I should call it, I, I cannot reveal the name yet, will basically use our traditional materials, yeah. Interesting. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, Aeronith case. Uh, several, again, uh, you know, their uh, questions tend to cluster around yep. uh, similar subjects. Uh, several folks are asking about Zenith, Zenith's plans, and uh, this gets back to what we were discussing yep. before in terms of what makes a, a well-done versus a not well-done heritage model. Are there plans on the part of Zenith to expand the uh, heritage line? And there's a particular model a couple of people are asking about. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can... A particular vi oh, the, uh, the the chronometer typo. typo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. I mean, the typo has been um, it's been really, really successful, and uh, it's really part of our history. So yes, there will be editions. We are going to work on on special editions on this one. I mentioned the line pilot because we have also amazing pieces in our history, and mm. uh, we have a few projects that you may hear about in the in the next, uh, I would say, next two years. Yes, definitely. I mean, we will go into our heritage and develop new watches. Definitely. Yeah. Last question. And again, Please. several people want to know. Yeah. Uh, your personal favorite vintage uh, Zenith. Interesting. Uh, there are quite a few. This is always a tricky question yeah. to ask a, a brand CEO also because, you know, you're, you're supposed to love all your children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you are, you are, you are. No, but also, it's not only the children, it's the uh, ancestors. That's right. You know, I, yeah. I went into the, yeah. I spent quite a bit of time in, the, uh, in, the, in our archives and uh, I saw so many interesting watches yeah. that I want to work with. You don't uh, have to mention the specific but model, but do you ever look at the, you ever see a vintage model and say to yourself, oh my God, what were we thinking? I think, <laughs> as we discussed earlier, I'm still very impressed by the, yeah. the original El Primero. Mm -hmm. It seems basic, but it's true. Yeah. 1969, 1970, when you look right. at those, when you look at the power of this movement at that time, it's, it's, it's quite stunning and, yeah. and, and, and still famous the same way, uh, so many years after. Yeah. Uh, there is something special. There is a, there is a myth. There is really um, something um, that you cannot touch, that you cannot really uh, measure right. about that particular movement. Right. It's magical. And, and when you talk with the watchmakers that have been here for a long time, uh, even some retired one that knew uh, Mr. Vermo or some of the big guys of this company, right, right. They, the, when, when they, they talk about El Primero and all this time, uh, yeah. something magic happened with the brand. Yeah. So for me, 
it immediately touched me in a, in a different way. Yeah. Great, wonderful. Well, thank you, Julianne. You're headed back to uh, pleasure, you're Jack. headed back to Geneva tomorrow. Uh, tonight, actually. Oh, tonight. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Goodness. I'll be in Geneva yeah. tomorrow morning. So, for those of you who are interested in the, uh, the uh, minutia of uh, Geneva history, um, we have coming up a, a festival um, called uh, L'Escalade. Yep. Uh, which celebrates a night in which the French tried to invade Geneva yep. and were repelled, legend says, by a housewife pouring boiling hot vegetable soup on the heads of the invading soldiers. That's exactly it. That's yeah. exactly and it. In 1602. 1602. And tomorrow there will be a race in the old town of Geneva yeah. with 51,000 people running around the city. 51,000 people? Yeah, that's a lot at the Geneva scale, you know? Yeah, yeah. And anyone who's been to Geneva and seen all the hills, yeah. it's not yeah. an easy place to run. No, it's a tough run. And you're running in the... You're, you're I will, for yeah. sure. My kids and I. Yeah, we all run. Fantastic. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care. And, uh, oh, I should say also, uh, Mr. Jonathan Buse was... Uh, had, uh, we, we had hoped to have him uh, on air also today, but unfortunately, he's uh, feeling a bit under the weather after uh, traveling steadily on our behalf for almost three weeks straight, but uh, uh, he'll be joining us uh, at some point in the future, hopefully the not-too-distant future. Sure. Uh, Julian, thanks again so much for joining us. Thank it was you, great Jack. to have you on. Always a pleasure and, to see uh, you. Thank we'll you. see you soon. Yeah, and great. Thank you very much. Uh, see you folks next week. Thank you.